So we're here at the stunning St George's Hall. Obviously January is upon us, uh, all feeling a little bit under the weather after Christmas. But we've got something to look forward to and something which I love is, is beer. And something that's coming to St George's Hall the last weekend in January is a festival of winter ales. Uh, Mark Hensby, you're behind this. Tell us more. Right, well this is um, St George's Hall Winter Ales Festival. It's the second time we've run it. Um, we've been doing a September festival here now for three years. Um, so we will have well in excess of 200 different draft real ales. Uh, on top of that, a selection of continental bottled beers, some wine for those that are coming with their partners that don't drink beer, and of course, a Liverpool gin bar. So Liverpool gin are heavily involved as well in, in this beer festival. So it's not just beer. I've been to some others in the past, and, and you can only get a pint, which is great for me, but obviously mm. people, the people that come. Yeah. Uh, there's something different on offer here too. Well, we've broadened the demographic of the people coming. So as you allude to, 10 years ago, beer festivals tended to attract a certain profile of <laughs> yeah. middle-aged gentlemen yeah. in the main, whereas now, uh, by providing um, gin and wine alongside the beer, I will emphasize it is predominantly a Winter Ales mm. Real Ale Festival, but there's something for everybody. Tell us, for anyone that doesn't know, what, what is a Winter Ale? Well, Winter Ales tend to be darker ales, um, although we're calling it a Winter Ales Festival. It doesn't mean it's going to be only dark beers. There will be a hugely wide range. In fact, I suppose even in the winter, lighter beers do tend to be more popular than darker ones. But because of winter, there is more of an emergence of stouts and darker beers. So a bigger, bigger selection of darker beers. Have you got a favourite beer that you, you know, you've been doing this a long time? Can, can you choose one out of all these fantastic beers? That, that's your favourite. Um, I'm mainly a light beer and wine drinker. However, I have to say, um, last weekend at the brewery, Liverpool Organic Brewery, we ran a brewery tour and I was asked to sample our um, Imperial Russian Stout and it was absolutely gorgeous. Very strong, um, 8% plus, um, but like drinking alcoholic cream. It was really? be beautiful. Yeah. I look forward to trying that yeah, one. Yeah, uh, there's been a big rise in, in the love of, of beers like this and, and not just your normal lagers now. People seem to be getting into it young and old. What's happened over the past couple of years? Well, if we go back 30, 40 years, the big brewing companies were really intent upon ending the life of Real Ale and move to keg products only. And thankfully, Camera created itself, i say about 40 years ago now, and reverse that trend. Um, and if we go into more current times, 10 years ago or thereabouts, there was the start of an explosion in microbreweries, um, which are now being, tend to be called craft breweries, but one's got to be quite careful there. Mm. Um, but um, it, it's brought back real ale proper big time. So we've now got in the United Kingdom around about 1,500 microbreweries, which means that we are per capita uh, we have more breweries per capita than any other country in the world. Tell us about Liverpool as well, because Liverpool seems to, to uh, as well fallen in love with, with these beers. We've got a few a few breweries here in Liverpool. Obviously, Keynes is massively famous, um, but since then, there's there's a few starting up. We've got the Craft Beer Company, is it? Yeah, others? Liverpool Craft, they're friends of ours. Uh, Melwood, who's up in, um, in the Safari Park estate. Um, Mad Hatter is around. Uh, George Wright. Uh, I don't want to miss anyone out or I'll get, um, or I'll get told off. I'm sure but they'll all be taking part in it. Oh, no, they will, and we'll have all yeah. their beer here, definitely. Um, yeah, um, when we first set up Liverpool Organic Brewery, we were the only dedicated microbrewery in the Liverpool city area. And since then, there's a, a good half dozen uh, appeared. Um, the, the reason that works is because in the beer market uh, overall, Real Ale is the rising star. Um, lager producers are suffering because, um, I think largely because of the discounting in supermarkets, mm. more and more lager drinkers are drinking at home and because the pub industry is still suffering badly. But if you find a Real Ale pub, you'll find they're doing very nicely. And so there is more interest in beer. Um, younger men are certainly drinking it. But s strangely, or perhaps not strangely, the biggest growth area in Real Ale is actually young women. Wow. So the ladies are drinking now too? The ladies are drinking a real ale too. We will definitely at the festival here have groups of four, six, eight or even a dozen mm. women coming out on their own um, to enjoy an afternoon and an evening 
um, here in St George's Hall. And good on them. Now it's not ju- it's not just beer that we're going to be celebrating. It's not just gin and wine. We've got some great music too, including uh, the beautiful organ there behind us. Yes, St George's Hall organ when it was built in the 1840s was the largest classical pipe organ in the world. It's an absolutely magnificent instrument, and we have. Um, a popular organist coming to play it during the sessions and then we always end each session with another organist who comes in and plays the Vidor Toccata to finish the session off. Brilliant, brilliant. And on top of that we're we're having some buskers as well uh, to lighten it up a little bit. So there'll be buskers dotted around St George's Hall. Um, Just one question before we finish. Have you got a favourite pub in Liverpool? Because, you know, I've I've got a few I could be here all day. Have you got one that you would say, go, go and give it a try and try some real ale in that pub? Oh dear. I know I'm going to get into trouble here, but I have to say the Belvedere. The Belvedere pub. It's tucked away behind the concert hall. It's probably one of the smallest, if not the smallest, pub in Liverpool. Um, It's an old-style pub, uh, built, I imagine, in the very late 1700s. It's been modernised and adapted very slightly, but the interior of the pub is listed. So it's very small, 25 people in the pub in two rooms, and it gets crowded. But it's a lovely little pub run by a good friend of mine who's my partner in the gin business. Oh, there we go. So that's, that's Mark's tip, the Belvedere. Go and check that out. But also get down to St George's Hall last weekend in January. The first big beer festival of the year, really. Um, just finally, why should people come and where can we get tickets? Um, tickets have to be bought online. Mm-hmm. If you go to Liverpool Organic Brewery's website, uh, there's a ticket and events tab there. And if you follow that, that'll take you. Um, I should also say that it's probably pointless turning up on Friday or Saturday night expecting to pay on the door because Friday and Saturday night sessions will very definitely sell out and frankly Saturday daytime probably will as well. Uh, Thursday night, Friday day you'll probably be okay on the door but Um, safer to buy in advance. Why should people come? Well um, if they like real ale that's probably the starting point but um, 200 plus beers in the surrounding St George's Hall um, you're, you're gonna spend not much more than 20 quid, including the entrance ticket. You'll get a colour programme, you'll get a, a souvenir glass to take with you. It makes pretty good value for an evening or afternoon out. Brilliant. Mark, thank you. Good luck with it, and I'll pleasure. definitely be seeing you there. Uh, but come along. Uh, end of January in St George's Hall, Thanks Festival of Winter Ales.